Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explained. My name is David Kim, and today I'm going to bring I'm going to be bringing you an API video. I think the last one I did was Instagram API, and that was like a three-part series, but um, of just Instagram. But now, instead of uh, I'm well, I'm going to take a break from these whiteboard videos. Uh, as you may know, if you're a subscriber, um, I'm going to take a break from those and start doing some API videos. Um, and if you feel like you're a beginner and that APIs are like, whoa, what is that? Um, don't be too afraid. I'm pretty dang sure that you could actually follow along with everything we're doing. It might sound a little intimidating at first, but uh, definitely isn't. And of course, if you are comfortable with APIs, uh, you will definitely know it's not intimidating. API is just a way for uh, websites to get information, kind of. Um, I guess in simplest terms, that's what it is. Uh, what happens is uh, you make some API calls. Uh, it's just uh, ways to get information from like a website. And today we're going to be going through that process uh, using um, NPS. And NPS, NPS stands for National Park Service. We are going to be using their API to kind of grab information that they already have. So pretty much, you know, if you go to the NPS website, you can search for all this information. But if you want to use their they're kind of like their backbone, their skeleton for maybe your own products. Uh, maybe you're creating like an Alexa app, um, or you're you want bits and pieces of it for your website that you're customizing. Uh, API calls, like that, that would be how to do it. And so let's go ahead. Um, if you just Google NPS API, uh, stat, which stands for National Park Service, you will get all these selections. Just um, click on the first one. The second one is where we're going to be headed to, but for now we'll just click on the first one and we'll get to this page. Uh, as I told you, National Park Service is um, who we're dealing with today. And um, just to warn you, this is a beta API. And uh, this is actually the second take that I am doing of this video because, uh, well, it was kind of like a first look video at first. Um, I wasn't messing around with the API, but uh, as I was creating the video, I felt like Either I was doing something wrong, or maybe it's because it's beta, not everything is fully functional yet. But a lot of time was wasted on just uh, trying to get things done and, and failing. So uh, we'll just go with the simple things uh, in this video. Hopefully, it'll be shorter, and um, hopefully, it'll it'll create it'll contain more useful content for you guys. And so, of course, uh, you you guys are going to be seeing my API key today. But uh, this page uh, is the first link that you would get after clicking from over here. Uh, go ahead and read this page if you want. Maybe it'll give you more information about what to do, but uh, other than that, developer.nps.gov, that's where you want to go. And just add in your first name, last name, your email address, it doesn't need to be a company email address, and how you intend to use the API. They just want a little bit of a story. Um, not too much, right? And this is not, this does not uh, determine whether or not you get the key. You can literally put anything in here and they'll probably send you the key right away. I got mine in less than a minute and I just wrote in there that I'm going to make a YouTube video. And uh, especially given that this is a beta program that's going on right now, I feel like all of these keys are going to be wiped out anyways. And so, um, yeah, if you guys want to use my key, uh, go for it. I'm going to see if there's someone I could email to get rid of the key. That's what I usually do, but given it's a beta program, I'm not too worried about um, you know, the world making all these calls on the key that I'm given. But anyways, yeah, that's how you get your key. Um, they're going to give you some, of, this is the only example in the whole website, um, which I think is uh, not too cool. I wish there were more examples, but this is what we're given and this is what we're going to uh, work with. Uh, at first, we're going to be going through this with Postman, uh, which is right here. You would have seen this if you watched my Instagram API videos. And pretty much just post in your uh, get request there, and of course uh, for this API, they only support the get requests. Um, if you click on this second one, they'll say right here only the get method is currently supported. Um, makes sense though. I wouldn't expect more. Uh, well, I guess it's not like a social media thing, so we don't need to be posting or anything like that. Um, I'm only interested ever probably to receive information from NPS anyways. Uh, so let's get, get go ahead and get started. They say that uh, resource endpoint is this. Query string parameters look like this, kind of like here. Um, probably stands for Yellowstone and Yosemite. 
the HTTP request header is where we're going to be putting our authorization key. Um, sometimes you put the API key up there. This time we're going to be putting it in a header. And so let's go ahead and call this authorization. And well, let's plug in the key that we're given. So there we go. That's my key that they gave me. And let's go ahead and send this request and see what we get. Um, cool. We get a, a JSON response. Let's see. If we don't have the authorization uh, and you see something like this, like some kind of HTML, whatnot, um, that means something went wrong. You're not getting uh, you're not getting a JSON response. This is not JSON. You're just you're getting an error. If you have authorization, you're going to be getting something like this. And um, so yeah, that's the example. Let's go ahead and look at some of the resources. So from here, uh, let's go, okay, maybe I lied. There's two examples here, um, and I'm pretty sure they're going to continue to add more. So if you see this video down the line and there's multiple, don't blame me. This is what I'm working with right now. Anyways, uh, they say this is the version. Let's go ahead and look at our version. It's version 0. Makes sense because we're in beta. And resource, that in, for us right now is alerts. And if we go up here, under API resources, alerts, articles, campgrounds, these are all resources, all things that we can put in here. It does not look like we could stack them, but um, these you can stack. Uh, like you could have part codes, and then after that you could have a limit, and after that you could have fields or whatnot. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and look at some of these things. Let's, um, we're not going to look at everything. We're going to go ahead and just look at a few. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at parks. How does this work? So this is slash parks, and uh, basic data includes the location, contact operating hours, entrance fees, and whatnot. So let's go ahead and look at this. We are we're on alerts. Let's go ahead and go to parks, and I guess we want Yellowstone and Yosemite. So let's see what we get. States: Idaho, uh, Montana, I think, and Wyoming. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. That's Yellowstone. California, that's probably going to be Yosemite. And yeah, it's giving us these two uh, two responses here, total two, because we asked for two. Um, let's ask for a third one, Zion. I know that's probably going to be the park code because these park codes are four letters each. And uh, so we're going to get three responses now, or, or three in our response. We're going to get the Yellowstone, we're going to get Yosemite, and down here we're going to get Zion. Cool, and so you have all this information. Um, one thing you might notice here is that you see all these. You, you see default, you see sortable, you see searchable. Uh, let's talk about default first. Uh, some of these are false, some of these are true. And if you go over to API resources, you will it explains here how to turn them on. So on default indicates whether the property is indicated true or false. Pretty much whether it's going to show up when you make a basic request uh, on that on the resource and if it is false then you can turn it on by uh, adding it to the field query string so see how this is fields something like addresses something like contacts that's probably going to be false and in our situation let's look at what is false let's turn on some things addresses and contacts yeah those are false let's look at something else entrance fees and entrance passes um, those are both false so if we go into our code here um, we won't be seeing any and let's go ahead and just Let's deal with one national park, my favorite, Zion. You can see here that there are indeed no entrance fees and entrance passes. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and make them give that to us. Uh, let's see. Maybe I could have done authorization here. Mm, not sure. Uh, let's go to params and add in fields. That's what they wanted us to put it in. And something like entrance fees. Send that. And now, uh, within our JSON response, we get all these fees. Uh, cost 30, cost 25, 15, 30. Um, I think it's cheaper for non-commercial. Uh, individual with no car, cost 15 bucks. And uh, it looked like on our fields we were able to stack them. So let's go ahead and ask for entrance fees and entrance passes. I put a space in there. Let's see if it ruins it. Nope, it's still good. Entrance fees, still there. Um, entrance passes. Entrance passes. 
did not show up. I think it's because of my space. Let's get rid of that. All right, entrance fee still there. Entrance pass is now also available. Um, unless I just missed it, but anyways, it's here now. Uh, entrance pass has cost 50 bucks. Admits the pass holder, blah, blah, blah. All of that. A little cheaper than the National Park Pass, but it only admits to Zion, so uh, yeah, that's the information you get there. Um, two other things, sortable and searchable. I'm going to go ahead and save you guys time and my rant by saying I tried these and it didn't work. Um, I, it's a possibility that I might have been doing them wrong, um, but I went ahead and, and looked at them. I read all this stuff and I just couldn't get it to work, so... I'm not going to go over that in my video. I'm not going to try that again. Um, probably down the line, uh, it's going to be fixed, especially once it's out of beta. It's probably definitely going to be fixed if they want to keep that feature. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and work with what we have. And right now, we're working with... Uh, we can we can do fields, and pretty much, which was turning on and off these this default. Um, or, sorry, turning on. Uh, I also tried to turn off, and I don't think there's a way to do that. Um, but anyways, let's continue on. And uh, So, okay, we have it in Postman, but what if we want to have it in our actual code? How's that going to look? In Postman, you can click on code on that, and you get all of this. And, and they give you a lot of options here. Um, if you want to use like jQuery, if you want to do native, request, all that stuff. Um, I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Uh, one is using this uh, Node.js request, and another one is using rest pro request promise. And so now here we are in, um, we're here in, what is this? This is Atom. And uh, what's going to happen is we're going to make this request, and it's going to fail. And I'll explain why it fails to you in just a bit. But before we do that, I'm going to put my terminal in there. And so I, I named this file. Uh, NPS API dot, NPS API JS. That's what this file is called. And uh, just to show you guys that it is this. Um, yeah. It's gonna say hello. So yeah, this is the file. And let's uh, take a look at this. And see, once again, if you get this HTML doc type, all this stuff here, um, sometimes in the title it'll tell you what's wrong. Uh, but this, it does not look good. It does not look like our response in any way. Um, after struggling with it for a little bit, I noticed that this Postman thing just was not working for me. I don't know why. But when I did user agent and I went ahead and changed this to um, request, because this is a request, uh, at that point it did work. Let's clear that and take a look at this. And this does not look pretty. Um, maybe, maybe if we parse this, but uh, I'll show you in the next one uh, how it'll be how it'll look. And um, I guess let me show you side by side, pretty much, or not side by side, but up and down, how similar these guys are. It came with all this var request. It, it came with all that, and starting from the options, the only thing I changed was uh, this Postman token. Um, I changed it to user agent request. Uh, honestly, I'm not that familiar with how Postman works. I don't know the ins and outs of it. So maybe this does work for some people, but for me it didn't, and that seemed to be the only problem. And so I just uh, replaced it with something that did work. And of course, if you're Posting this up on like GitHub or whatnot, um, somewhere public, and you want to keep your API key private. Uh, there are ways to do that. You probably want to pass it in as a variable from a, a file that you did a git ignore on. Um, if you guys want a video on that, I could do a simple video on that. Probably, probably like five minutes or something. But um, the second way I wanted to show you um, is going to be this uh, request promise. I called it RP. And the code down is down here. Um, pretty much we have, it's very similar. We have options and we have the request. We have the then and response data. And uh, json.true down here 
um, pretty much the user agent instead of request we have a request promise um, the header is just the same you have authorization you have all that the API key right there and uh, this is what it looks like pretty much okay wait wait a second I don't know why this is so long total oh I see huh it took the limit off which is weird because I thought the limit was 50 all right limit well limit I think the default limit is 50 it says it somewhere yeah default 50 but um, it gave us 25 uh, honestly I'm not too sure how to change all that but let's see maybe maybe okay this had QS part code so if we just had QS in here somewhere um, let's just rip that piece of code Oops. oh you know what happened It's because we didn't even have a part code but regardless of that I don't know why the why it gave us past the limit I thought it was just let's get rid of that we know that I'll give us on if we do that but let's test out with the limit get rid of all of that and yeah total there's total of that there's that many responses and the limit one so maybe they did limit us let's go ahead and take a look at that one more time okay they did give us only 50 uh, this this long thing had me worried that they were giving me all the all the all the possibilities, uh, 515, so I guess that's how many national parks we have in the US. Um, they limit it to 50. Your parameters would be over here, so if we limit it to one, I just saved that file, we're gonna run it again. And there's still the total, but we limit it to one. If you're using park codes, then it wouldn't matter because there's only one named Zion. And so let's go ahead and ask for that yeah they would only give you one because there's only one Zion see that total that's how many of their possibilities 515 possibilities but when we ask the parameters to give us the park code Zion there's only one possible one so yeah this was using a request promise um, uh, I'm probably not the best guy to speak on how it works uh, but this, this is the this is the format so if you want to go ahead and uh, I guess if you want to witness it working, that here you go. Um, if you want to know the ins and outs, uh, I'm not the right guy. But uh, yeah, definitely different ways to have your API calls. I think um, the reason why I liked Request Promise was because I was making an app that required multiple API calls. I was making an API call on an API call. Um, well, not on an API call, but I was making an API call after I got a response from another API call and uh, request promise made it really easy for me to wait until um, that first one finished. Whereas um, when I was trying to use other methods, you know, the, mm, what is it? I forget what it's called. I'm blinking out, but uh, a, the asynchronous, being asynchronous, uh, it really screwed up the whole process. So um, request promise, if you're making multiple uh, API requests, um, that rely on each other. Uh, request promise, I, I recommend that. But um, other than that, that's it for this video. Um, hopefully in the, in the future videos it will be longer with more content. Um, or maybe not longer, uh, I'm not sure how long this one was going for. But uh, definitely with more content. This was a beta API, so uh, unfortunately I felt like sortable and searchable were not working, so I left that out of the video. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, if you liked it, uh, like it, comment, and subscribe. If you have requests for specific APIs, um, go ahead and comment that. Uh, hopefully, um, I'll get to it and maybe I'll make a video about it. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next one.